Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Terry White with Adobe and it's my pleasure to give you a first look of kind of getting started with Adobe Express. The 10 things beginners want to know how to do. So this isn't everything Express could do. We could spend all day doing that. It's the 10 things to get you up and running and the 10 most common things people want to do right off the bat. So I'm dedicating this video to people like my sister Pam, who's not a graphic designer. She does this kind of stuff on the side, outside of her day job at home, at, you know, when she's like creating brochures and flyers and cards and things like that. And she's not, you know, a, a trained graphic designer, so she needs a little help. And that's what Adobe Express is great at. It can be used from anyone who's never done anything with design, all the way up to creative pros that want a faster, easier way to do things, either for themselves or for their clients. So with that said, we're gonna dive into the 10 things beginners wanna know how to do, and we're gonna start off with number one, which is the interface. So the interface is where we all start. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, I've launched Chrome, which is the browser I'm gonna use. Chrome works best with Express. You can use other browsers, but I find that Chrome works best for me. So with that said, uh, it takes me to, when I go to new.express.adobe.com, it takes me to this sign-in screen. So Express, first and foremost, is free to use. You don't have to pay for it unless you want more. So if you do pay, either for, via your Creative Cloud account that you already have, uh, for maybe using some of the other apps, or you sign up specifically for Adobe Express, you'll get premium content if you are a paying member. But anyone can get started for free. There's no trial or anything like that. You just really start using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in with my Adobe ID, uh, but you can sign in with a social profile. So if you do create a free Adobe ID, kind of keeping all your content available on all your machines, that's probably the best way to do it. And I've already gone ahead and done that. So let's go ahead and switch over to that browser window that has my Adobe ID signed in. Next up, you'll notice that it's, I'll, I'll just walk you through this real quick, but it's the interface that's really easy to get started. So first of all, it starts off with a nice welcome. What do you wanna to make today? And you can go through the different categories. So for you, it's kind of like, it's just giving you kind of a, a tasting or a buffet of all the different things you can do. But of course, if you know specifically, hey, I wanna create a social media post for my Instagram, for my Facebook, for TikTok, for YouTube, whatever it is, then it will take you through those various social posts that you can make. Now you'll notice that when you hover over either e any of these, you get the option to either browse templates. So for people like Pam, who doesn't, you know, don't, doesn't want to start with a blank page, uh, she can browse templates and just get started with a template that's fully modifiable. Or if you are that creative pro, that graphic designer, that person that kind of knows, hey, I want to start with an image and build up from there, or start with text and build up from there, or just a plain background and build up from there, you can create from scratch on any one of these. So on any one you choose or hover over, you get a choice, start with a template, which you can completely modify and tweak to your heart's content, or create from scratch if you know what you're doing and you want to just go ahead and dive right in. And you'll notice that even when I go to social media, it even breaks down the social media channels over here for their different sizes. Now you might say, well, what's the difference between a, a Twitter post or a X post and a Facebook post? Really, it's about the size. So without you having to be a social media expert, the social media people behind Adobe Express have gone through all the platforms and found out the best sizes to make everything Within the, within the requirements of the social platforms. So if I'm making a Facebook profile cover, I don't have to know that it's 851 pixels by 315 pixels. The Adobe Express team is taking care of that for me. I just go ahead and create it and know that it's going to be the right size. And just in case I forget to tell you, even if you pick a template and the template's a, you like it because it looks the way you want, but it's not the right size, Anything you pick or anything you create can be resized to the appropriate size. And you may need to tweak or move things around a little bit, but you can uh, resize anything that you like. 
So uh, social media, video, I can uh, create a photo. I can create whatever I want, even documents for print. So it's not just online. If you want to make a flyer, a menu, a resume, a brochure, an invoice, anything you want to create for print as well as online, you can do that with Adobe Express. So I'm going to pop back over to For You because it kind of gives me that look of everything. And let's go ahead and scroll down and keep going. Now, uh, of course, generative AI, Adobe Firefly's engine is built into Express. So even if you don't have the perfect image or you don't have the perfect template, you can go ahead and generate one just by describing it in a text prompt. So text image will give me an image. Generative Fill will let me upload my own image and tweak it with Generative AI and Generative Fill using Firefly to remove or add things to the image. Text to Template lets me describe the kind of template I want. I want a birthday uh, card for my sister Pam and it will go ahead and create a birthday card template with the name Pam probably already on it, ready to go. And last but not least, text effects. These are just, again, words or sentences that you want to design using a text prompt. You would type in what the word's gonna say and then describe what it's gonna look like. Now, even if you're not creating something like uh, fully fledged or fully baked, like a flyer, you're not creating the whole thing, you have these quick actions for just those quick jobs that you wanna do that aren't necessarily a full-on express experience. So if I just wanna remove the background from a photo, maybe I'm gonna post it on a site that needs it to have no background. Then I can just upload that photo and do it right here as a quick action. I don't have to pick a template. I don't have to start with a document. I have to do any of that first. All of these are standalone actions that you can do for what they are. So for example, maybe you need a QR code to go to your site and you wanna post that QR code on something else. You wanna upload it to a business card site. Maybe you're making a business card using their template, whatever it is. So if I go ahead and put in my URL for my, uh, for my uh, QR code, it will go ahead and generate a QR code. If you were to hold your phone up, your camera up to this right now, this would take you to my social media and you should follow me on social media. So go ahead and do that. But anyway, I'll take you to it and then you can style it. You can choose uh, different looks and feel for it. It doesn't affect how it works. It's just a design thing. So you can choose if you want a generic square looking QR code, you can do that. If you want to change the color of it to maybe match what you're going to put it on. You can do that. And of course, you can download it in whatever file format you need. I suggest PNG for most compatibility, but download it in whatever format you need. And there it is. Just put your link in, generate your QR code, and keep going. You don't have to worry about having to start with a whole document to do any of these. And then it drops down to popular templates. These are always changing. So by the time you watch this video, these may all look different because they're constantly evolving. Uh, and it's just whatever is popular at any given time for the kind of post that it is. So these are the most popular Facebook posts right now, and they will change over time. And they're seasonal templates based on the holidays. Valentine's Day is coming up as of, as of the recording of this. We just passed Martin Luther King Day. So all of these uh these templates are seasonal based. And then there are add-ons. You can even add on functionality to Adobe Express to add on more things. Like for example, you see Google Drive here in OneDrive, but if I were to go and view all the add-ins, then I can probably find the one that I like, which is the one for Dropbox, because some, I use Dropbox and sometimes I wanna pull content in from my Dropbox. So I can do that right here just by adding the Dropbox compatibility. And then you'll get into the, the generative AI with Firefly. So text to image, generative fill, text to template. They're all separated here and text effects. Now at the very bottom are the documents you've created. So your most recent ones will be here. And if you wanna go back further in time, you can say view all and see everything you've ever created in Express and go right back to it and keep editing it or duplicate it and work with it. Then on the left-hand side, you've kind of got some categories here to get uh, either get started or get to a specific area of, of Express. So if I wanted to just start with a plus sign, type what I'm looking for, and uh, either choose a standard size, and yes, you can even create a custom size if it's not one that's built in, or upload media. So that plus sign is kind of a generic getting started if you want. 
And then you see your stuff. This is kind of the stuff you have in the cloud already. So these are uh, documents I've worked on. They're Photoshop files. They're all kinds of things I've done. And then uh, Explore lets me, as the word implies, Explore, Express, and see more templates now and get there. And there's even a scheduling feature built in for people that want to schedule posts to go out to various platforms. So you can see back on January 8th, I scheduled this video to go out on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. So it published it for me on my behalf to all of those various platforms. And then last but not least, there's a learning section for getting tips and advice and how to do things that I don't get a chance to cover in this video. So it's great you can come back here and learn more. All right, let's go home and let's continue on with number two, which is start with a template. Okay, number two, start with a template. Well, let's say that I want, I'm a marketer and let's go into marketing and I wanna create a flyer. So I'm gonna create browsing templates cause I'm not that graphically inclined. Well, I am, but I'm gonna pretend I'm not. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, uh, and, and don't be afraid, even though it gave me a blank page, that's okay. It just set up the size for me, uh, typical eight and a half by 11 here in the US. And again, if I need to resize that, I can, but it gave me the size to start with. Then it's showing me like the, I don't know, hundreds of templates, 727 uh, current templates for, re or for res the results of a flyer. Now I can drill down and search flyers for the specific kind of flyer I want. So I can say, um, we're having a sale. Let's see what sales come up. Uh, uh, just for yard sale, bake sale, back to school sale, and again, just generic sales based on what I chose. So let's say I'm doing a bake sale, but not necessarily a raffle, but I go ahead and click bake sale because I like the look of that. I like the cookies. I like the background. I like the things that it says. Now it doesn't, it's, it's not me. It's like, this is a bake sale and raffle. I'm not doing a raffle. So obviously I need to change this. So even though number two was starting with a template, now we're about to go to number three which is replacing the text, the image, the colors, the fonts, everything about the template to get it to be yours. Okay, let's start with the obvious. We needed to say what we needed to say. So sometimes when you click on a, a pre-baked template, it's, you'll, you'll click on something and you'll notice that it's a group. In other words, each one of these text boxes have been grouped together so that you can easily move them around. You can move the whole thing around. You can resize the whole thing. And so that's why they're grouped in the first place by the template designer. However, I want to drill down to bake sale and raffle so I can get rid of and raffle so that it's easier to work with if I ungroup it, right? Well, there's an ungroup right there, but then it's all ungrouped and then you, you lose the advantage of being able to move things around. I just want to point out that you don't have to ungroup. You can just double click and get into the text box you want without ungrouping. So I can take off, just highlight this and raffle and just delete it. I didn't ungroup anything. I just double clicked and drilled down to what I wanted. So next I can uh, double click on this to benefit the Carter High School lacrosse team. I don't know what the Carter High School lacrosse team is, but I'm gonna say um, for the veterans, of America. All right, so that, that's that's my cause for this bake sale. And I can pick this up, even though it's still grouped, move it around, and I even get smart guys to let me know that it's still centered and ready to go. Now, when is it? Well, it is going to be Friday, February, and I don't have a calendar in front of me, so don't hold me accountable to the date, not being correct, but let's say it's gonna be Friday the 15th. And it's gonna be at 3 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. And where is it gonna be? It's gonna be at, you know, that famous place, 123 Main Street, um, anywhere uh, US or anywhere um, in, in Georgia, uh, 30000. All right, so that's where it's gonna be. Now, notice how uh, the zip code went down to the next line because the box isn't wide enough. So when you're resizing, you have the option to pull, pull a box wider or narrower. That's great, so if you want to make something fit, you can do it that way, and if you wanna make something bigger, use one of the white circles. So in this case, I'm making the text smaller or bigger. Now you can always change the point size of the font, just like you would in any other program, uh, but you can just resize the box to get it to be the size you need it to be, 
and of course get it to fit where you want it to fit. Now we've got our text together, so we've changed the text. Maybe I don't like this font though. So when I click on bake sale and I drill down to that in the group, and keep in mind, this is all still a group. So even though we did all that stuff, it's still grouped together. So when I click on bake sale, you'll notice that uh, I get the option for changing the font. If I know exactly what font I wanna use, cause maybe I'm a designer that way and I know exactly what font, or I kinda just wanna look through all my fonts. And a lot of these come with Express. A lot of these are built into your system. It just depends on which one's which. And it will show me, so for example, you see the ones with the little crowns? Remember I said this is free? Well, the little anytime you see a little crown, that means it's a premium content. And that premium content is for the paid members. So you get to use fonts for free, you get to use your fonts, but if it's a premium font, then that means it's for the pay, paid Express users or the Creative Cloud users using Express. But the thing I love about this is maybe I'm not a designer, I don't know what's gonna look good, so I get this beautiful recommended view and I can say view all, and it shows me what they will look like. So maybe I like that one or maybe I like that one. And this is awesome. God, I wish I had this years ago when I was just sitting there for 15 minutes trying to pick the right font. Yes, that's right. I'm one of those people that won't know which one it is until I see it. Now, if you click on one that you kind of like, but it's not really what you want, or you maybe want to see some other alternatives, you'll notice these two little squiggly lines above each one. So that just says, show me similar ones to that, and it'll drill down to even more. So you get the choice to pick different ones based on what you want. And uh, again, I, this is so hard. These all kind of look cool. That would be one for kids. I like that one. It looks like a kid font. But I'm gonna go back to this one, and we're just gonna go ahead and say we're done. So I can get out of this, get out of that, and just go back. And again, if I want to make that bigger, I can because I got control over the type. I can also pick it up and move it around. I can also scale it with the white handles on the sides. I can also make it be on two lines or one line. So all of that works the same. Now we've kind of customized this. And by the way, if you ever wanted to change the color of something, so I highlight this text for the Veterans of America and I'll click on fill because there's a fill color of white. So what's cool is number one, uh, just like I may not know what font I want, I may not know what color I want. So you kind of get some recommendations. You get recommendations based on what else is on the page. You get recommendations based on the original theme that you chose as well. So maybe it's the yellow you like, maybe it's the purple, which blends in. We wouldn't want to use that. Maybe it's the black, maybe it's the white that looks best. <laughs> it's up to you. And of course, uh, if you say, nope, I know exactly the color I need, it should be the color of the cookie. I can go ahead and just click the eyedropper, click on that cookie, and it becomes the cookie color, and then I can even tweak from there. Or better yet, and that's not a good color by the way, better yet, I can go to custom and make it any color in the spectrum. So I kind of like the dark blue, and that works best for me. And of course, um, you can even make it red, white, and blue if you want it. So we can make this one, we can set highlight veterans, and we can make that uh, red. And these are not necessarily design recommendations. They're just showing you what's possible. So don't critique me. I know there are people out there saying, well, I would never do that. Then don't. <laughs> you don't have to. This is not the law. This is just showing you what's possible. All right. Uh, so we got that. So now we got the white for the red, white, and blue veterans of America. Uh, you Again, just playing around with different choices here. And we can make that a little bit bigger. So the colors actually stand out a little bit more. And even if we wanted to tweak the font for this, we could as well because we're going to get the same kind of recommendations because that's selected now. So it's showing me all the different font recommendations for that. All right, without further ado, let's keep going. So now we've changed the font, we've changed the color, we've changed what it says. What about these graphics? So as I drill down, I see that luckily each one of these cookies are separate. And I like cookies, don't get me wrong, can't go wrong with cookies, but the whole thing isn't just about cookies. So let's go ahead and delete this one and delete this one. I'm just hitting my delete key as I select them. 
And let's see, can I drill down? Okay, so these are all one picture, so I can't drill down on those. However, but I did get rid of the other two because I want to pull in something new, something different. So this is now we're going to get into a little bit of replacing the assets uh, that you already have on a page. This is part of still part of number three, replacing the text, images, colors, and fonts. So now we're going to do the images. So if I go to media, this tab here on the left-hand side, it shows me all the media. Well, I could search for cake and guess what? It's going to show me free Adobe stock images of cakes. This is awesome. I, I like, I, hey, I got a photographer built right into this if I don't have my own photos uh, to use. Now, obviously, if I'm marketing my own products, I would have my own photography to use. But if I don't and I just want something quick, I can just click on one of those and there's a cake right there. Now, I know what you're saying. Terry, that white background is not cutting it. Look at the cookies. Look at how beautiful those are cut out. Well, be well, beauty can happen in Express pretty easily, actually with even one click. There's a remove background. So I just click remove background, it figures out what the subject is and removes the background and even lets me twirl it a little bit just by rotating it and putting it where I want. And I can scale it and have it go off the page a little bit and that's fine. But what if I don't find what I'm looking for? The cupcakes are actually pretty cool too. Let's go, let's go put those in just because I saw them and I got a little inspired. Who doesn't like a good cupcake? And the same thing, let's uh, click on that and remove background. And let's see if it does that and it did that nicely and we'll put that down at the bottom. Now let's say we wanna put something over on the right hand corner of the special, but we don't, we don't find it here. So I can say text to image and I can go ahead and choose a size. I'm gonna choose, um, let's choose landscape. So that just gives me a landscape picture size, but now I can go ahead and type in and describe what I want. Slice of pecan pie. And I want it to look like a photo because all the rest look like photos. So this is using generative AI powered by Adobe Firefly to generate multiple results of what I just asked for. And if I like what I see, I'll pick one of those. If not, I'll, I can say to load more and it will give me more choices or I could change the prompt if the prompt isn't right. So uh, just looking at these, these are pretty cool. Give me exactly what I want. I think I kind of like this one. So I select that one and I can go ahead and, oh, well, maybe not. Hang on. <sighs> so many choices. So I'm going to say this one. Okay. So now that we got that one, we'll go back out of the text image and we'll say the same thing. We'll remove the background. Now, I don't know how it's going to work, but it actually worked pretty good. And we're here. So I don't need that top part of the pie. So remember how the handles for the text allowed you to expand and contract the box? The handles here are crop handles. So if I don't need that, I just crop down to just that. And by the way, I don't like the pie facing that way. I want it to face into the flyer. So I can just flip its orientation just like that, scale it down and put it in place just like that. Now I've got the bake sale flyer that I wanted. And we've gone through number three, replacing text, image, colors, and fonts with the things you want, even using generative AI. And yep, you can even select the background if you want it to and change that background to something else if you want to, that's up to you. I need to leave this one because we're gonna do something totally different. But notice it says untitled up here in the upper left corner because it doesn't know what this is. It doesn't know what we want. So always before you leave, click on the untitled and name it. Bake sale flyer. And you can give it more description if you want. But then that way, when you get out of it, uh, yep, there we go. It will be there as the bake sale flyer in your recents and it will have the right name so you know what you know what each one's for. All right, now we can move on to number four, which is starting with your own asset or custom size. So, so far we've done um, using templates. We've done, talked about creating from scratch. We talked about the plus sign. And again, the plus sign is great. If you know a custom size you wanna create based on some requirement that's not a standard size, you can go into that custom size and tweak it and make it what you need it to be. Or you can just upload media and start from that. 
Now, when I say upload media, what are my options? Well, let me show you here. Let me get out of this for a second. I, I hit the plus sign to do it, but you also have the option to start here where it says start with your content. So you can use photos, videos, or files. And when we say files, like PDFs, you can even start with a PDF file, which a lot of people have already, and use that as your foundation. So I'm gonna click this box to go find, and notice it's showing me a Photoshop document. I, I have an Illustrator file here I can use. I also have a PDF that's both tall and wide. Let's use a wide one this time because I think the last one we did was tall. And we'll just go ahead and open it. My PDF has been converted and it's saying it's ready to open. It gave me a preview of it over here and this PDF is actually from Adobe InDesign as a template because I like the template in InDesign but I wanted to give it away to people on Express, my, my, my sister, for example, and let her be able to edit this. So I basically made it a PDF. Now she would be able to open this in Express and use this template. And it didn't come in as a static graphic. These are all removable, customizable, and changeable. So, and deletable. <laughs> so for example, it's giving me this big box for where my images would go. And I'm just gonna delete that box. I don't need to be told that. And it's also got kind of a busy background. I'm gonna make it a little less busy by deleting some of these swatches of color. I don't need to delete them all. I just wanna kind of not have it be so busy in the background. I kind of like the yellow. Let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of that one. And we'll leave it there. All right, so now I made it a little less busy. And it's, instead of a grand sale, it's actually, double click, grand opening sale now oh god it's too big it's taking up too much room it's overlapping don't panic just simply select everything or at least the grand opening sale part and just simply make that smaller grand opening sale i just keep holding down i just hold down the negative sign on the, on the point size until it got small enough now i could also expand it so that i can in this 50 percent off i'm going to move down to the next line I can expand it to make it bigger and just go that way as well now that I made the box bigger. All right, so I got what I wanted to say. I don't like this 50% off font matching the same font. So let's go ahead and change that. So first of all, it's 50% off, not all whatever that is because it's my template now, it's my, my store. It's 50% off uh, all um, dresses. All right, we'll, we'll say dresses. <laughs> this is going to be a fashion store. All right, so 50% off all dresses. And then I can go ahead and highlight that and I could change it to a different font. This time I'm actually just going to pick a font instead of uh, using the suggestions. Uh, let's say I kind of like, um, let's go in. I kind of like this, this one. Yeah. And eh, maybe not. All right, because again, sometimes I see it and sometimes I don't like it when I see it. All right, use that. That's better. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and make that a little smaller. And keep in mind, you can do everything you learned in number three. You can replace the color, replace the font, so forth and so on. Okay, so basically we started with a PDF. We have now edited that PDF. Now we want to add something to the PDF. And again, all of this would be changed or deleted to what it needs to be. Um, uh, for example, uh, skirts two. <laughs> I'm bad at this, but skirts two, <laughs> skirts. Let's say, oh, let's let's just say jackets. All right. Uh, now that's too too. The box is too small, so either make the box bigger or the type smaller. Those are usually your two choices. Uh, all right. So now we got jackets. Okay, only this week. Um, now, sometimes because it's a PDF, the word might be broken up into different boxes. So August isn't all in one box. No problem. I can get rid of the pieces that are wrong, expand the box out, and change that A to February. All right, and then we'll go ahead and make that smaller. We'll just highlight 2-9 February and make it small enough to fit. There we go. Okay, so then we have some just sample logos for the sponsors, and of course you would go ahead and make those either real or delete them if you don't have sponsors. So that's 
up to you. So let's delete that one. We don't really need major as a sponsor. We don't need brand as a sponsor. We don't need sponsor as a sponsor. And of course you have other text to change. You get the idea. What I want to get to now is I want to add something. So I'm going to go to media. I can upload from my device. So upload from my, my drive and I can go find. So I've got some pictures of, uh, Let's see, I'm gonna uh, add a picture here. This is a JPEG one of, of my model that I photographed. So this is my picture, not Adobe Stock. I'm gonna open that in. All right, so now that open that photo. Uh, again, I'm, I'm picking that photo up, I'm moving it around and I want to flip it, which we showed that before. I wanna have her facing the other way. And I also want to uh, remove the background. So let's go ahead and say remove background. Even on my own photo, it doesn't have to be a stock photo. There we are. We've now removed the background and we can now put this where we want it to be. Okay, great. Now, it's cool having her over the text. I need her to be a little smaller over the text. Maybe something like that. And that becomes my content that I started with from scratch. It could be an image. It could be a PDF. It could be an Illustrator file. It could be a Photoshop file. It could be a video. Whatever you want to start with, just go ahead and upload and start and keep designing. You can add elements of your own, just like I uploaded this photo. You can add elements from Adobe Stock. You can add text to image elements. And of course, you can remove the background, even on a video, by the way, which we'll see, and keep, keep on going. All right, so that's number four, starting with your own content, whether it's your content or a custom size blank page, and then you're gonna put your content on it. Let's move on to number five. Okay, number five. I've just taken the liberty of opening up this template of a birthday card, and it is, um, number five is gonna be about layers and groups. Talked a little bit about groups already, so really we're gonna do layering. And layering is important because sometimes you're gonna be frustrated by something you bring in that you want to be behind something else. So for example, let's say we get out of the card template, and we get to our media and we wanna bring in, um, again, I'm just randomly clicking the very first thing I see, which is this photo. Now you notice over here on the right hand side, that photo, since it was the last thing we brought in is at the top. So it's covering literally everything on the whole thing because it's above everything else. But if I wanted to put this down and I wanted to be below or behind happy birthday mom, then I can come over here because these are technically layers and I can just drag this down to be behind happy birthday mom. And it's now behind. So you get the idea that these layers are automatically generated. You don't have to know anything about layers and they are automatically put in place for you. So this flowery kind of border, like remember I told you before, you can usually just double click or click to get to something. And sometimes it just might be hard so you might temporarily move that behind everything else so that you can get to the thing you want and then move it back. So maybe I wanna to get to that thing that is right there. I wanna go ahead and remove the background from that photo, kind of putting them on the other background, and then I can move the flowers back up to the top so it's in front. So uh, whenever you're having a hard time selecting things, just remember that you have layers to work with and the layers allow you to control what is, um, what is on top of what. And you also have the ability to lock something. So if you wanna lock something so it can't accidentally be moved, I can't click on uh, happy birthday and move it anymore because I locked that layer. It has a little lock layer icon on it to let me know that that layer has been locked. And every time, anytime I select it or come back to it, I can always unlock it so that I can get back to it and be able to move it around. And same thing here, I can get to the happy birthday or the, the picture of mom because I can see it behind there. And then I can go ahead and do remove background on that photo as well so that we have her kind of maybe off to the side. And then we can go ahead and reshape and resize this so that it fits better so that happy birthday mom just looks better there. So that is layering. And if you want to create your own groups, you can group as well, so you don't, you don't have to live with the groups that are in the template. You can select two or more things and group them together for your own benefit. Now the, the mom, this new mom picture is now in the back, so it's kind of behind the flowers. I would just move it up in the layer stack. 
So it's above the flowers now. So her head is in front of that flower border or yarn border, whatever that is, and instead of behind it. So layering is very important and very easy to do in Adobe Express. And that was number five. Now we're going to get to number six. All right, welcome back for number six. Number six is how to animate. Animation is a big part of Express. It allows you to take static content, like uh, just a social post with images and text, and make a move and create a video. So even if you don't have actual video, you can make a video in Express just animating your text and images. Let me show you in this example. So I just went and found this great game day, uh, this game day post, and these are all individual elements that was as we've seen before. So that's a photo. Uh, this is a shape. This is text. Uh, of course, it's got a background. It's got all these various elements. Now, if I get out of text and I select an individual item, any individual item I select, if you scroll down, you have all the different things you can do with that item, including animation. So every single item I select, I can animate. I can even animate a group. So let's select game, start at the top, click on animation, and you have three choices for animation to animate it, how it comes into your layout. If it just sits there and does something, which is called looping, so it'll loop the whole time, or how it animates out at the end. So beginning, middle, end, or beginning the entire time, end. So if I say I want to animate game in, then these are my choices of animation so far. And I say so far because we're always adding more. So bungee, it just shows me, it just kind of falls down and bounces for a second. Drift, it kind of drifts in from the side. Drop, it drops, but doesn't bounce. So forth and so on. I'm not going to go through each one, but you get the idea. Flicker, grow. I kind of like grow, shrink, and I said I wasn't going to go through them all, but you get the idea. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's say that we want to animate the grow for game. So now I clicked on grow, and now that automatically, because I animated at least one thing, it automatically generated a timeline. So this entire animation takes five seconds. If I want it to take longer, I can stretch it out and have the whole thing take longer. So maybe I want to animate some kind of intro that's 10 seconds. I can just keep dragging it out until I get to the 10 second mark, which is right there. Uh, so you can animate something to be as long or as short as you want. So animating it in, and it, it just did it. So now the 10 seconds, nothing's happening. Okay, so when I click on, let's go back to it. When I click on game, and I go back to animation, notice it's blue because it's already been done. But uh, I can also do the duration. Right now, it's less than a second. So I can say, hey, this takes at least, or I can type it in maybe. Let's do 1.0, one second. So it takes one second to animate in. So play, one, done. Just like that, one second. We can stop it. So now I want to animate the next thing. So I want to animate the, the arrow here, the little, little arrow thingy. So I click on animation. And I want to animate that in, and I want that one to spin in. Yep, just like that. Now, because they're all being animated at the same time, they all will animate at the same time. So they kind of spin in together and, and do all the things together, and then they just sit there. If you really want to create something professional, then you really want to spend time, a few seconds learning about layer timing. So um, that's, a, that's an on off down here. It's off by default, but when I turn it on, it just gives me a little bar above my timeline. What this little bar is for, is for you to, to select individual elements. So when I select game, it shows me the bar for game. When I select the, the arrow, it shows me the bar for the arrow and they look the same because they are the same. They start at the very beginning, but I could take the arrow now that it's selected and move it in. So I can move that in maybe right there. So now it would play like this. Game, then the arrow. Because the arrow starts later. You're controlling where this starts. So if I say day and I animate day, and I think you're getting the idea of this already. Let's animate day. And let's have day, uh, let's have day slide in. 
and we'll have it slide in from the le our, our left to right or right to left. All right, and we'll make it slide in a little, take a little bit longer than a second. Great. So same thing. If I were to now, while it's still selected, move this out, it's showing me where the first one is, showing me where the second one is. Now I'm going to move it to where I want the third one to be. This is the third animation to be about there. So now when I scrub back or move the playhead back and hit play, one, two, three. So you just keep doing rinse and repeat, as we like to say. So if I want this uh, this this athlete now to fade in, let's say uh, it would may, maybe happen, happen right about there, and we'll have the athlete fade in. And again, where? I want it after those first three to be right about there. I'm not going to do them all, but you get the idea. One, two, three, fade. And so you would just keep going. That is how to animate in Adobe Express. Now, because it's an animation, you have your choice of how you get it out of Express. When I click download, because I've created a timeline, it automatically says, hey, you want to make this a video? Because obviously, how else would it play if it's not a video? But you can also, you can make it a still, but it's just going to be a static image with no animation. So if you want an animated GIF, for example, you could export this out as a video and then run it through the quick action that converts a video to a GIF. So you even got the best of both worlds. All right, so that would download it to my drive as a video, and I could post that video that has no video in it to social media, and away it goes. All right, that was number six, how to animate. Let's go to number seven, how to resize. All right, let's continue with number seven, which is one of my favorite things in Express, and that's how to resize templates or your content for different platforms that you want to post it on. This is a square post, which is great for Facebook and Instagram as a post. But as we know, if it were a story or a TikTok story or a short or a reel, it would need to be vertical. If we know it was going to be a Facebook profile picture or banner, it would need to be wide. So a lot of times you need something, the same content to be in different sizes for the different uses you're going to use it for. So let's take this tennis match and let me show you what I mean. Now, this tennis match has a background photo. And when I click on it, I notice that uh, and this is a, a very important option. It says detach page background. That means the background is already attached. If you want to have a good resizing experience, whatever your background is, whether it's an image, a box, whatever it is, you want to attach it to the background. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and create uh, a, new, a new background for it. Or let's just go get a new background for it. Let's say that we don't like that tennis photo. We want to go to media and we want to go to tennis. And we just want to find some tennis images. All right, so let's say I like this one better. Now, when I bring that one in, it's obviously on top. We learned about layers already. And I want to go ahead and click on it and notice now my option is to replace page background. If there was no background, it would say attached to background. So I'm just going to say replace page background. Now that's my new background. Because it's the background, it will automatically resize to fill the background of the new size. That's why attaching whatever the background is to the actual background is important. Not just putting it there, but physically hitting that attach button. All right, so now we got that. And of course, we could still go in and move stuff around and kind of make it look better. And even though I didn't group those, I just selected them so I can size them all at the same time. And same thing with this line here and this line here. I'm just selecting all these things so I can size them and move them together as one. Just so you know, you can do that without grouping. And of course, we want to keep things aligned wherever possible. So we want to line those up on the sides. Okay, anyway, that's enough about design. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, so we got this ready to go. And now I want to, I need two more sizes. So you notice there's a resize button up here. When I click resize, I want to keep the square because maybe I'm going to put that one on, I don't know, Instagram. But I also want it to be a story. So I want to check off Instagram story. And notice how the recommended sizes are the most popular ones. But if there's a size that you want that's not here, first of all, you can create a custom size. You can type in whatever you need it to be. And just about every social media print format you can imagine is already here. So these are all set and ready to go. 
in like for like for formats and, and places and things I've never even heard of. But like the, the social media team and, and Express or the Express team does a good job of making sure they go and find every possible way to do something. So now LinkedIn blog post, for example, is 1200 by 628. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now, the minute I chose more than one, so remember we chose, um, is it still there? Instagram story. It should still be checked. Anyway, Instagram story. And now we have a LinkedIn blog post. And so we got two sizes. The minute you have two or more sizes, you can do three, four, as many as you need. But the minute you have more than one, resize gets grayed out because you're no longer just resizing the one page to be the new size. You're saying duplicate, keep this page, but give me the other sizes as new pages. Because yes, Adobe Express supports multiple pages. So when I say duplicate and resize, just like magic, it gives me the two new sizes. I still have the square. I now have the Instagram story and I now have the, the Twitter, or I'm, I'm sorry, LinkedIn blog post. Now, they, they, that doesn't mean they don't need to be tweaked. Like I see some things I would change. So for example, let's go to the story. Double click, takes me to the story page. And actually, now that we have all this room, maybe you want to take that, make that bigger, move that up a little bit. And maybe you want to take its game day and make that bigger because we've got some room vertically. And want to take all of these elements and move them over here. And we'll make those bigger because it's a story. So people are going to see this happen pretty quickly. So we want to give them the size to read it. That's done. Now, how do I get to the next page? You have arrows to go back to the square, to the story, and now to the blog post. Same kinds of things. So we got all the room in the world now for this blog post size. We can make that nice and big, put that over there. Actually, let's move it up for a second. Let's get this stuff all selected, move that maybe down here. Now we go back to this and this, just holding down the shift key and selecting those. And then we make game day over here on the side and make that nice and big as well. And then of course we can take these and align these with the bottom right there and make those bigger as well. Maybe not as big. So now I've got all three sizes ready to go. That's resizing in Adobe Express. Favorite, favorite feature. Because I can get, I can build something once and repurpose it for all the different platforms that it needs to go on. All right, let's get to number eight, how to use Firefly generated content and text to template in Adobe Express. All right, let's Firefly and light up your life with Firefly generative AI. So uh, we, we already did a little generative text to image. We did that a couple times already. We generated the, the pecan pie, so forth and so on. Now we're gonna generate a template. This is new. So I'm going to go to generative AI and I'm going to scroll down and text to template is in beta. So I can go ahead and click and type in my description of not an image, but an entire template. So I did summer party for Pam, my sister. So now we'll just go ahead and hit generate. Instead of it generating just a single image, it's actually generating an entire editable template. And the beauty of this is, like with most things in generative AI, you're unique because you won't ever see the same thing twice, not the same exact thing anyway. So I see uh, I see four different choices, and they all, by the way, say Pam, because I said it's Pam's party. Pam's summer bash. Uh, Pam's summer bash, let's celebrate. Pam's party. And I can say generate more results. Maybe I don't like those first four, or maybe I do like one or two, but I want to see more. So just like with generating text to image and you can get more choices, you can generate text to um, template and get more choices. And, and these are cool. I like these a lot. And I kind of like this one with the beach. So let's go ahead and select that one. <clears throat> so now it's loading my new template just like it would any other template in Express. And there's my new template. So at this point, I can go in and tweak any part of this that I want. And so for example, if I 
uh, don't like this image, I could replace it. If I want to say join uh, Pam Summer Soiree instead of Pam Summer Soiree, I want to say uh, uh, Yard Party. So the text is completely editable. The images are replaceable. And of course, I would probably replace this with an image of Pam. <laughs> but let's say I don't have one. Uh, so let's just do a uh, yard party just to kind of maybe put, create a vibe for a party, even though it's not Pam, Pam's exact photo, but, uh, oh, I kind of like this one with the lights. So there we go. We got our lights. We got our, and of course, save the date instead of July 20th. Maybe it's going to be, there we go. Drill down. Maybe it's going to be July 4th. All right. And maybe we want that bigger. So all the things we've already learned how to do just come into play now that we got our text to template already created for us using Firefly. Now there's one more thing I want to do. We talked about text to template. We talked about text to image with pecan pie and other things. We didn't talk about text effects. So when I click on text, the, the Pam's backyard is cool and I can create different fonts for that but I want to create something that's even more special. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to apply text effects. And here I can go ahead and just like start, get a starter, maybe the flowers. And you notice that it made it flowers. I want to change it here. There we go. Pam's uh, backyard. And notice it's doing just that. It's making Pam's backyard, and I'm going to stretch the whole thing out and to make the thing smaller. And now instead of that kind of just generic text, I can get rid of that now because we have something that looks like flowers. So we can zoom in on that, take a look at that. And if I want to change that to be something else, I can go to text effects and not Pam, but we can say, um, how about uh, seashells? So it's generating seashells for the look. And now we get seashells since we're on the ocean. So I can make it sand, I can make it gold, I can make it um, precious metals like this one, gold drip right here. I can just go ahead and choose that as one of the suggestions and use any kind of text effect I want and it will then generate that one. I'm gonna undo that one because I don't want the gold, but you get the idea. And notice, um, I didn't talk about this, but the results are, you're getting four of those as well. So if you didn't like the first one, you can click on different ones to get different results for that text and it will generate the text. And no matter what you change the text to, or even the look of the font, it will still generate that text in what you chose. And for those of you who can't see, let's zoom in a little bit. Those are actual seashells in the shape of Pam's backyard. So text to effects, text to templates, text to image, all built into Adobe Express. All right, let's move on to number nine. All right, number nine, two more to go, nine and 10. Number nine, how to create a video. And video is huge. It's really more important now than ever. And it's in many cases replaced photos. So um, it would be remiss if we didn't allow you to create video with Express. So you don't have to be a professional video editor. You don't even have to be a professional video person at all. You don't have to understand the lingo. We kind of saw a little bit of that with the animation. Let's go ahead and, and drive it home now with uh, creating the video from scratch. Yes, I'm actually gonna do it from scratch. Yes, there are templates. So you don't know how to do it from scratch. You can do it with a template. But I'm gonna go ahead and say, create a TikTok video from scratch. And just like that, it just gives me a timeline with nothing on it. Now you can bring in anything you want, including your own video. If you have a video you shot with your phone or with your camera or whatever video device you used, you would upload that video right now and start editing and playing with it. I'm going to, since it just, I'm going to give you kind of the same way that we do things here. I'm just going to create a, uh, no, let's do yard party. We did that in the last example. Let's do it again. Yard party. And this is giving me, I'm searching for videos under the media tab. 
and it's giving me different videos to work with. All right, now I notice a lot of these videos are in, um, they are in, what do I wanna say? Uh, landscape orientation, and that's fine. Even if you shot a video landscape and you wanna use it, you can. So let's say that we wanna use this one, this group of people. We can uh, fill the video with that. So we can say, make that video take up the whole screen. Now, of course, you will have parts of the video cropped off because it is a wide video and you're trying to make it tall. But I just want to show you, you do have that option. And you can move it around so you can say, hey, those people are more important than the other people. So we want to see those people in the frame. So that way you kind of get the same thing. All right, so now that we got our video in, and again, it could be a video you shot. It could be, obviously, you'd shoot it vertical if you wanted it to be vertical, I would hope. But even if you didn't, you get the option to do that. Next up. I want to then go ahead and create a scene. So what's a scene? A scene is when you want to add an additional video, text, or image. So when I click scene, so we have our first one. And our first one, by the way, is looks like it's around 8 seconds, 8.8 .8 seconds. We can trim it. We can say, no, I, don't, I want that video to be that long. I want that video only to be... First, but maybe five seconds. All right, so now that video is only five seconds long. So we just trimmed off the end of it. We can go in and add another scene. And now that scene is automatically five seconds since the first one was five seconds. And in this scene, we can put something totally different. So we can say, um, let's see if we get vertical video. I just, want, I just want to type vertical video and see what happens. Yeah, I can start getting vertical videos. So you can go find a vertical video that is more appropriate for what you're doing. So we want to do, um, actually, I kind of like the beach one. So we'll, we'll drop the beach in just for the sake of dropping a beach in. And again, that one looks like it's about 18 seconds. Now, even though the scene was five seconds, the video itself is longer. So we can trim the video back and maybe make that video shorter to what we want. So now we're gonna have that video play for five seconds. And then we're gonna drop, jump to the next video and that video is gonna play for 2.1 seconds. So we can add another scene, keep adding as many scenes as you want to have as many things as you want. So I like the dog playing. So we have a vertical video of a dog playing. Of course, again, you'd be using your own videos that make sense when they're grouped together. Now. Let's say I want the dog playing first. I can pick it up and move it around. This is video editing, being able to reshuffle and reorganize your videos the way you want. So now the video of the dogs playing first, maybe I want the beach first or the, the, yeah, the shoreline first. So now the shoreline plays first for a couple seconds, then the dog, and then the party. So you get the idea, you can edit to your heart's content. Now let's say we want to go in and we want to kind of make, maybe do some other things. We want to add in some text. And we want, now these are all text styles, different examples you can create, but you can just simply add in generic text and we can say, join us this summer. And I'm going to go ahead and select that text, get out of the text itself. Actually go into select there we go. Select it as an image or a graphic, I mean. We can go in and we can make this text, uh, let's make it, fill it with a color that shows up. White shows up better in this case. We can also outline it, because outlining can make things look better too. That way it has a black outline around it. So even on a, uh, on a white background, you'd still be able to see it. And of course we can still make this bigger. And, we can move it around, change the font, all the other things we've already learned. And keep in mind, well, where's that gonna play? It's gonna play on that first clip and then not because that's the scene we added it to. We can show layer timing, select it, and say, no, don't start with it. Give me a couple seconds, or maybe a second or two with no text. Can I animate it? Sure. Select it, go to animation, and animate it in and maybe have it um, drop in. So even though it's starting later, it's still going to have that animation on it. Drop in. There we go. 
next uh, scene. So we're gonna add uh, some more, add some more text for fun in the sun. All right, same thing. We need to be able to see it. It's kind of a dark background. So let's go in. Actually, let's get out of it that way. There we go. Select it that way. Select it so we can see it. Fun of the sun. And you know, you change the font, change the size, orientation, alignment, all the things you want. But now that one plays and it just does this. Join us for this summer. Fun in the sun. And we can then go in and add one more text. Pam's yard party. Same thing, select it as a, as a element, change it so we can see it, put it where we want it to be, and maybe animate that in as well. And we'll have that one grow. All right, so this would be our discon discon disconjointed video uh, with three elements that have nothing to do with each other, but there they are because we can edit a video here at Express. Now, people always ask, do you have transitions? Yes, there are a few transitions here. The plus signs between each scene is where you can add transitions. So you can add a transition or a scene. And we can add maybe a dissolve here and then maybe a push. We'll add a push on that one. There we go. There we go, cool. So let's play that. I hit the space bar to play, which is pretty generic in social media or in video editors and it's still taking too long. I can just shorten that up a little bit, shorten that scene. So it's nice and quick. All right. There's our video. We've edited it completely in Adobe express and you would use better video options. I'm sure. So let's say you, you kind of like maybe select the video and you just don't like it. So you can hit replace and you can upload a new video from your device or you can say um, party. Let's just see if it will work with, if I say party vertical video. Yeah. So you can specify a vertical video for your subject. All right. Yeah. So now I'll replace it with that one because that's a better one. And it, it kept it to the scene. It kept my text. And it still did everything the way it's supposed to, even though that video is much longer. We can see it when we select that video, how long that video is, but it's okay. We're not seeing all of it because we told it just to be a part of that scene. So join us this summer for fun in the sun, or now we can change the text. Not in the sun, but it's fun at night because <laughs> it's a night scene now. And I'm just doing all of this instinctively because it's literally that easy. Making changes, adding clips, adding transitions, add, you know, editing, trimming it down, and making it, what, making it your own. Add as many scenes as you want. Make the video as long as you need it to be. And then when you're all done, and oh, before I forget, because people ask this and I almost forgot. Well, this would be a silent video. Can I add audio? Yes, you can. So if we go to media, there's an audio tab and you can record your own voiceover. You can talk through the whole thing and have it be your voice under the whole thing. Or you can upload your own music clip if you have, or use one of the um, built-in ones. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that or not, but I can go ahead and drop that one in and it makes it automatically the right size for this whole video. And that was just the first one in the list, but you can scroll through, find the acoustic or background or music track you want. And you can still add a voiceover that plays over the music and just make it what you need to be because you can control the volume. So I can drop the volume of the music down while I talk, so forth and so on. Let's say there's a clip you want to split because you want to add in something else. I just right click and I hit split. So that split the scene right at that mark 
so that I can maybe add another scene and put it in between. So maybe I want to show another clip in between. Oops, I want to show another clip in between those two videos now that I just did. So let's just again party vertical vertical video and we'll yeah we'll add the DJ there. Okay, so great. So now it's that yeah so we just split it and it just splits it right where you right where you had the playhead and you right clicked so that you can put something in between a video that's longer than you know you don't want to play the whole thing without putting something in between all right when you're done just hit download and download that video as an mp4 to your device and then share it any way you want all right on to number 10. All right, number 10. This is the finale. You've created all your content. You created your video. You created your stills. You created your flyers. You created usual template. You got things ready for social. You're ready to go. So I went back to this one. Remember the tennis match, which was three pages? Well, I want to I want to send this out to the various platforms that it goes on. Now, you have the option to do one of a few things. You can... Simply hit download. And you can download the individual page you're on, or you can download all pages. And you can pick the format that it downloads in, including PDF, which is great for print. If you're going to just do it on social, either do JPEG or ping. All right, now that you've got it ready to download, if you say all pages, it will download all three pages as three separate graphics, but it will zip them together. So you'll see, you know, whatever the name of this is, tennismatch.zip. In your downloads folder, double click on it, you'll see all three images in a folder. Or just go to each individual page and, and download it that way. So you can do it either way. So if I download that page, starting to download, done, and I just saw it drop into my um, downloads folder, and there it is, ready to go. Okay. You also have the option to share it. So when I share it, I can send it to someone. I can even invite them to edit it. Yes, you can do. Uh, group edits. So, hey, I created this for you. Go ahead and tweak it the way you want, and they can get into Express and do it. You can publish it to the web with a link, so they can just click the link to see it. They don't have to, you don't have to send them all the individual graphics, especially if you have a bunch of pages. And my favorites, you can send it directly to the various social media platforms of your choice. Now, of course, you need to link your accounts to each one of these, and there's a procedure to do that, or better yet, even schedule it. So when I schedule it, because I've linked my various channels, I can choose which channels it's going to go on. I want it to go on Facebook, I want it to go on LinkedIn, and I want it to go on Twitter or X. And now that I've got those three, I can put in what I want it to say under the post. Hey, um, it's on a tennis match. Okay, uh, great. And I can even preview it and see what it's going to look like on the various platforms. That's what it would look like on Facebook. That's what it would look like on X. That's what it would look like on LinkedIn. And I can either send it right now, put it on all three platforms right now on my behalf, or schedule it. And that way I can schedule it for whatever date and time. Now keep in mind, I'm only doing the first page you would theoretically go put the right page for each platform it should go on in the scheduler. So I wouldn't do the square for all three. I would go back and do the blog post for LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, do this one for Facebook and, and maybe um, Instagram, and then do, do the one for, you know, story for story. But you can go ahead and schedule them, and that way, hey, I can do it in, you know, when I'm working. I'm at my day job now. And I want my social content to go on my social networks in the middle of the workday. Scheduling is awesome. All right, folks, that's it. That's the wrap. We did the 10 things beginners want to know how to do with Express. There's more you can do, more to learn, but that should get you well on your way to becoming an Express master. To use an Express, like, it's easy, because it is. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.